A question that I'm often asked is, what is it like to cruise on Canada's west coast? So I thought I would take some time to share with you all uh, some of my experiences doing just that. Canada's west coast is in the province of British Columbia and below us is the United States of America, Washington State, and above British Columbia on the coast is Alaska. The aerial distance between Victoria, British Columbia and Stewart, British Columbia is about 965 kilometers or 600 miles. However, because of the complicated shoreline with deep inlets and uh, over 40,000 islands of varying sizes, this includes Vancouver Island and Haida Gwaii, the total length of the west coast of Canada is over 25,725 kilometers or 15,985 miles. When looking at the west coast of Canada, I like to look at it in different regions. I would say the most southern portion of the coast is the most populated. Uh, they have Victoria, Vancouver, and the Gulf Islands. This is the area that probably most of the boating on Canada's west coast takes place. This is, of course, where most of the marinas are, most of the amenities are, uh, getting fuel, food, water, uh, service for your boat. This is the easiest area to have access to all of that. Of course, as you start heading more north, these things uh, become a little more spread out. The size of the communities becomes smaller. The distances you have to travel between the communities becomes greater and uh, the challenges with boating also become greater. I was born and raised in the Vancouver area, as many of you know, and I do have to say, hopefully without bias, that it is probably one of the most beautiful waterfront cities you'll ever see. The contrast between the marinas and all the boats and the huge glass-covered skyscrapers right behind it uh, is pretty incredible. And as I mentioned, this is probably one of the most active areas for boating on Canada's west coast. But as beautiful as it is, and even though I'm from there, I've always yearned to go to areas that are less populated, more remote, more challenging, and in my opinion, some of the most beautiful areas of Canada's west coast. Of course, to do this, you have to start cruising north. And that's exactly what I did in 2016. I sailed my boat from Vancouver, British Columbia to Prince Rupert. That trip alone was over 520 nautical miles, which I did in two weeks. I could have done it a little faster, but you take a few harbor days along the way. And this is when I really discovered uh, the true beauty of Canada's West Coast.
most of the boaters transiting either north or south along Canada's west coast take a route called the Inside Passage and this passage offers very good protection from the Pacific Ocean in regards to weather and sea conditions. The disadvantage is that you have to travel along very narrow canals and channels which can experience very large currents and this is due to the large tides that we experience on Canada's west coast. The further north you go the larger the tides get. In Prince Rupert here you get tides uh, 24 feet which equates to about a uh, rise or fall of an average of four feet every hour during a cycle. So you can imagine the amount of water that's moving along these channels. There are some currents and uh, little passages you have to go through to get in and out of the Gulf Islands. They can get up to six or seven knots, uh, maybe a little more in some passages. But really the challenges start when you get, I would say, north of Campbell River. And just north of Campbell River is Seymour Narrows, where they do get uh, those 15 knot currents. When you combine these currents and large tides with really long channels, now you have the challenge of having to go through this long channel and take advantage of as much current as you can. So you do have to start really planning your days around the current. So it was an early start today. We we're up at 10 to 5. The reason we're leaving so early is because there's a spot called Race Passage and we need to get through it with some current and we could hit it later but then we're going to catch the end of the tide and then we might be fighting a little bit of current in, in this narrow channel that we're going up. So we decided to leave extra early. If you don't have the wind behind you, it's going to be in front of you. So your options for sailing along the inside passage are much more limited. Also there's a lot of commercial traffic, huge cruise ships that go to Alaska all summer, all kinds of barges that are transiting these waters. So that's probably the biggest disadvantage of cruising along Canada's west coast, north of, I would say, uh, Vancouver Island anyways, is that your sailing options become less. I think once you're cruising in the area north of Queen Charlotte Sound, this is when you really have to have your route planning organized. I always have a second anchorage in mind. I have my original destination in mind for the day, but I also have a backup anchorage in mind. Um, and have So I sort of have two plans per day, the original plan and a backup plan. A good anchor and a good amount of chain and lots of road is important because you may be anchoring in some areas that are you know, 60, 80 feet deep. When you consider how much scope you need in these areas, it might be fine on a, a calm day, but if you get caught in some weather, you don't want to be uh, short on that. Also, uh, being skilled at anchoring, because you are going to have to do a lot of anchoring once you get north of Vancouver Island, and uh, being comfortable with that is important. With that said, knowing where suitable anchorages are is very important and I use the sailing directions uh, they're guidebooks basically that show you where the anchorages are what kind of ground they have what depths you're looking at uh, whether they're suitable or not suitable so these are important books to have uh, and I often refer to them as I'm even uh, cruising along to my next destination looking for backup options and they'll often have uh, the recommended anchorages in there one thing that I'm constantly monitoring is the weather because it can pick up very quickly even in the summer months. Wind southeast 29 gusting to 34 knots. Well we are trying to figure out plan B because the forecast is not getting better. It doesn't look like it's going to get better by tomorrow afternoon. It's actually going to diminish slightly and then pick up again. 
and with what we were going through yesterday, that's too much to do that all day. So, trying to brainstorm for plan B. Yes, it rains a lot. We experience a lot of rain in this part of the world, so having good foulies, good wet weather gear, and having a full enclosure on my sailboat at least has been a, a huge blessing and made it much more comfortable to cruise. Probably one of the last things sort of on my list of most important things to consider when you're cruising on Canada's uh, west coast in the northern areas is having spare parts, having some basic engine knowledge, uh, how to do preventative maintenance, things like that, because your options for mechanics and service are really, really low until you get to Prince Rupert. What's going on down there? Well, I was doing my morning engine checks before leaving, and one of the things I do is I feel the belts. I have two belts, and this one's for the water pump, and as I was feeling along, there's a little, uh, like it feels good here, feels good, and there's a little soft spot here. You probably can't see it on the camera, but that's probably going to break eventually. And before we go uh, out for the day, I would like to uh, replace it. Just, I don't want it to break, because if it's going to break, it's probably going to break right at the most inconvenient time. If you're in a sailboat, you're at a bit more of an advantage and that you can still keep moving to that next destination where you might be able to get parts flown in or possibly find someone to uh, provide some mechanical assistance. A great area to anchor and stop once you've crossed the sound is Hakai Pass. There's Pruth Bay. Uh, you can anchor there and it's a good hold and it's protected. And just around the corner are some beautiful sandy beaches. From there, it's about 35 miles north, and you're in Bella Bella this, and Shearwater. These are two communities right in the same little uh, area. and not only can you get food and water and fuel at this location, this is probably the only location between uh, Vancouver Island and Prince Rupert that has a travel lift. As you continue north along the Inside Passage, the next community is Clem 2. Again, you can get fuel and water here, and there is a grocery store. I think the last time I was there, a jug of milk was about $14, so your perishables are expensive. But if you're in a pinch needing some items, uh, that is an option as well. Very good community, very welcoming, and very beautiful in that area. After leaving Clem 2, you're looking at some long days along some long, narrow channels. And one of my favorite spots to stop on the coast is Bishop Bay. It's right at the bottom of Douglas Channel, uh, a little bit south on Ursula Channel, actually. And it's not a large detour. But I highly recommend uh, after so many days of travel, you know, to stop there and check that place out. Some beautiful little hot springs in a little hut and uh, very therapeutic. Hartley Bay is just a little further north than Bishop Bay. This is another community where you can get uh, fuel and water. Not really an option for groceries there. They have a couple little uh, sort of corner stores in people's basements. Uh, if you just need some 
basic basic items but I wouldn't really count on Hartley Bay as being a destination to uh, uh, replenish your food stores but fuel and water no problem for sure and once you've left Hartley Bay you go up Grenville Channel some people call it the ditch they call it the Grenville grind it's a long channel that's super narrow if you time it right it floods in from both ends so it floods in from the south and from the north and then it meets in the middle and you can actually ride the current in and then ride it out so timing Grenville Channel is really to your advantage if you can uh, do that and that gets you to Prince Rupert of course in Prince Rupert there's a few marinas to choose from there's a yacht club here the town offers all the amenities that you can imagine options for getting parts for your boat there's mechanics there's large grocery stores the population is about 12,000 people so it's a good sized uh, coastal community compared to what you would have been experiencing uh, since leaving uh, Vancouver Island and this is a spot where you can also check into customs and check out uh, in and out of the country because we're not that far from the Alaska border The payoff, once you get north of Vancouver Island, is the beauty. This is really where you're going to experience and witness the most beautiful parts of Canada's west coast. I've come up with a, a little term I like to call rugged tropical. It's uh, waters that look tropical, but you're wearing a toque and uh, all your fowlies and your rubber boots, but it's incredibly beautiful another thing you're going to see more of is wildlife uh, we spent three days in the Coots Mateen grizzly bear sanctuary last uh, cruising season and we saw 24 grizzlies in three days and you just patrol along the shorelines uh, with your dinghy and there's the grizzlies eating the sedge grass the fishing also gets better as you travel north you have more options to get halibut and salmon, shellfish, and this is uh, an exciting time to start filling your fridge and freezer up with fresh seafood. Other types of wildlife that you'll see more of as you travel north are whales, porpoises, wolves, eagles, seals, sea lions. It's just more of an abundance of those animals up here. One of the things we love to do while we're on these cruises on Canada's west coast is beach combing. There's always interesting finds on the beach. So what'd you find there? So when we came back, when we came down from the rocks, the sand is really neat and there's all sorts of patterns in the sand and then I noticed that tucked away under the trees and sort of attached to almost looks like the branches of a tree that's fallen over is some pretty old rope. So we've been wandering around the beach since we got here and trying to find out how close this wolf came to us and we discovered it was actually pretty close. So uh, here's some of his tracks here and we found the spot where he decided to turn around which is just over here. Look at this. It's empty. So owner has vacated the premises. Yeah. And what is it? Or been eaten. Looks like a really cool urchin shell. Well, hopefully that provided a little more insight into what it's like to cruise on Canada's west coast, going from areas that are largely populated like Victoria and Vancouver. Most of the boating takes place in those areas. And as you go further north, it becomes more and more remote communities are spread out they're much smaller and as I mentioned really this is the most beautiful part of Canada's west coast I do plan on cruising on Canada's west coast for many more years and I hope you guys will enjoy uh, coming along for that adventure